And in the end, because we survived, we were able to regain our freedom. But regaining our freedom, it was not by accident. It was because of certain factors. Factor number one was the continued resistance of our people. Initially, the resistance was organized by our chiefs, our traditional chiefs. But they failed. Here in South Africa, you know, Shaka and all those groups. Tetsuayo uh, and all those. They tried, but they failed. Eventually, the nationalists came on the scene, organized political parties, and continued the resistance in a modern context. So that was one factor, the continued resistance of the African people. The second factor was the conflict among the Europeans. We were lucky. The Europeans started fighting among themselves because of their greed. Germany, which was a, 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 a new powerful country, started quarreling with the, the other old imperialists, said, you, you took too much uh, food. I also want some of that food. And who, who, who were the food? Ourselves. Uh -huh. You, Britain, you took, too, you took too many colonies. I also want a share. That's how the First World War started. To, to, to share us better, because German was saying, the German was saying that this sharing is not democratic. <laughs> I also want to share, because German had only it had Tanganyika, Rwanda, Burundi, Togo, and then Namibia and a little bit of Cameroon. Uh -huh. So they were saying, no, this is not fair. That's what the Yemas were saying. This is not fair. You, you the British, you have taken too much. We, we, we want, we want uh, more share. That's how the First World War started. Now, then the First World War led, led into the Second World War. Now, because of that, these pharaohs weakened themselves so much they had, even come, they had even come to us and, and, and mobilized our parents to go and fight their wars for them. They took Ugandans to, to, to Burma to fight, to fight the Japanese. And the Japanese were so scared of Africans because they said Africans were eating people. <laughs> and, and whenever the Africans were we are on campfire, you know, Africans like singing and dancing at night and making campfire. Then the Japanese would say, you see, Africans are roasting another Japanese. <laughs> but because, because of that conflict, because of that conflict, the Europeans weakened themselves. But what is crucial is that by the end of the Second World War, they were very, very weak. The European countries were very weak. But still, they tried to cling on to the colonies. Even after the Second World War, they tried to cling, to cling on to the colonies. You remember the, the French tried to go back to Indochina, and they had to be defeated by the Vietnamese. So that was the second factor, how we got our freedom. First of all, our, our continued resistance. But secondly, the fight among themselves. The third factor was the support from the socialist countries, from China, from the Soviet Union. That was the third factor. We were lucky. In 1917, a big country known as Russia was taken over by communists. These communists did not agree with the imperialists. They, they had a different opinion. And yet they were now controlling this big country called Soviet Union. 
So they started supporting us because they had a conflict with the, the imperialists. Then in 1949, China also was taken over by communists. And they also started supporting us. You people here in, South, in Southern Africa, you know this. Who was training ANC? Show me one, one soldier of ANC who was trained in the West. Just one. I don't want two or three. <laughs> Just one. Uh, you, you would get some little support from the West, demonstrations on the streets. Uh, there was an anti-apartheid anti committee in London. Uh, but there was no, nobody gave us any weapons. Nobody trained us to fight. The ones who trained us were the Russians, were the Chinese, were the Cubans. Cubans are the ones who came and, and contributed. So that was the third factor that caused us to get our, our freedom. Now, unfortunately, and because of those pressures, first of all in Asia, Indo Indonesia got independence. Because we were not alone that time, we were also with the Asians. The Asians were also colonized with us. So because of the Second World War, by the end of the Second World War, Indonesia had, had got independence. Ni 1947, India got independence. Uh, Pakistan. Then later on, in Africa here, the first country to get independence was, was Ghana, 1957. But also in Africa here, we, we, we had to fight Mau Mau in Kenya. Eh? Sudan 56. And, and Sudan 1956. But the problem is that after we got our independence, we did not analyze why we had been colonized in the first place. And then quickly rectify what had caused us to be colonized in the first place. When we got independence, we just relaxed. Uganda here, Kenya there, Sudan there, just relax. Started enjoying being in power. Forgetting that here, wolves are still eating lambs. Now, what is happening now? You have seen the pro you saw the problem of Libya. Libya, our late friend Muammar Gaddafi, had his issues. I fought Gaddafi twice because he, 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 he inter, inter, intervened in our affairs. 1972, because he, he was supporting Idi Amin. He was saying that Idi Amin is a Muslim and he's supporting a Muslim. Yes, Idi Amin was a Muslim, but, but an idiot also. <laughs> Are there no idiot Muslims? There must be some idiot Muslims. <laughs> so in 1972, Muammar Gaddafi sided with Idi Amin. And we had to fight him. I fought Muammar Gaddafi. 1979, again, he intervened on the side of Idi Amin, we had to fight him again. But in the end, we made, we made peace with the Gaddafi. And he had his issues, he had his, his ideas. Sometimes we would agree with him, sometimes we would not agree with him. Now, when this problem of Libya started, the African Union, with our chairman, who is here now, this gentleman here, they formed a committee a committee of uh, a few of us, I think we were six. I was one of them. The whole of the African Union gave that committee a mandate to look for a solution for the Libyan problem. Now, on one occasion, I didn't go that time. These excellencies, this one here, Jacob Zuma, and the others, I, I was not there, but my, my minister was among them. They entered a plane in workshop in his place. They were going to Libya to mediate. 
and they were told by NATO to go back. Yes. He said, you go back. Yes, he's here. If I'm telling lies. I'm not the one who invited him, you're the one who invited him. <laughs> African presidents on an African mission over African soil were ordered by NATO to go back. That NATO has not allowed them to land in Libya. Now, we call this in Swahili, Dharao, contempt. This is contempt. So now you can, you can weigh yourselves now. Your you presidents were ordered by NATO. Six of them, not one. If it was only seven, maybe you could say. <laughs> Six excellencies, African excellencies, were ordered, go back. Over Africa. Now, these fellows didn't listen to us. They continued. They killed uh, Gaddafi. Now Libya is in tatters, up to today. And the problem did not only end in Libya. It went into Mali. It has gone now into uh, Chad. The whole area is in, is, is, is in flames. E Egypt, yes. So now you see where, where you are. You were weak. Because of, of your weakness, you, you, are, you, you are colonized. Fortunately, we survived. And by a combination of factors, we got our freedom again. But we did not use our freedom to make ourselves stronger. We remained where we were. And now, the former colonies are coming back to continue where they had left off. 